This video is a re-upload because of a copyright strike, so the copyrighted content has been removed. You discovered that you can attach a vacuum hose to your circular saw. That's great. No more dust when, you, when you're cutting a bit of wood. Or any of the other power tools have this attachment. So you've got your old vacuum cleaner and uh, you plug them in. Problem is, it runs all the time. What you really want is, you want the vacuum to turn on and off each time you use the saw. So you don't have to get up, turn the vacuum cleaner off and turn it back on again when you need it. It's really distracting when that vacuum runs all the time. So what's the solution? Well, the solution is to use one of these master slave power strips. Now I can demonstrate plugging the automatic power strip in there and we take the circular saw and we plug it into the master plug the vacuum cleaner into the slave and we'll plug a light bulb into the slave as well so that because the noise of the circular saw will be too loud to hear the vacuum but you'll see the light bulb come on each time we use the saw so now each time we cut a bit of wood the vacuum cleaner will come on These socket strips are available on the internet, but what's the fun in buying one if you can make your own? This is the actual schematic of the circuit that I came up with. Um, I needed something that was uh, extremely simple and compact that could easily fit inside the, um, the power strip. Um, this is the master socket that the load is detected from, and this is the slave, which the relay switch is live to. So on the neutral side, there's a bunch of inverse parallel diodes, these ones facing up, these ones facing down, which create a volt drop of about 1.2, 1.5 volts if a load is drawn from this socket. So on the neutral side, there's a, there's a volt drop. This, this volt drop is then fed through this 10 ohm resistor to the gate of this uh, triac which is any sensitive gate triac would do here. Um, I used what I had at hand, it's a four amp triac, but you can use one of those little small um, half amp triacs, the tiny ones. But uh, this one is easy to solder because the leads are nice and thick, you can bend them and nothing's going to break. Um, it then drives the coil of a 200 and 230 volt relay. Um, and you might think, well, why do I need the relay? I could just use uh, a 10 amp, triac and drive the load directly from the triac well you could but you need a snubber network as well which adds complexity um, and also uh, a relay is just a pair of switch contacts which gives you nice clean output so you can you can switch any sort of load with a relay it doesn't care whereas um, triacs are quite fiddly with their loads um, more about these um, diodes connected in inverse parallel so you would have noticed that they look awful lot like two bridge rectifiers. Well, that's exactly what they are. But instead of the ACs connected together, the DC output of the bridge rectifier is connected to this one, which is flipped upside down from this one. So the positive is connected to its negative output, and the negative is connected to its positive output. And that effectively gives you two diodes facing up and two diodes facing down for two sides of the half wave of the AC. So the positive cycle of the AC and then the negative cycle of the AC. Volt drop for each half cycle. The reason I use two bridge rectifiers instead of discrete diodes is you need big chunky diodes. And with bridge rectifiers, it's all built in. They're effectively connected in parallel already. So you can carry more current because you're doubling up on the diodes and you can get um, them in high current versions and uh, they're nice and compact and, and skin and slim so you just connect them together and then you get all your diodes uh, wired up the way you want it so it's quite handy. So this is what the actual circuit looks like um, with real life components. This is more or less how I soldered them together as a test circuit just to prove the concept. 
and here you can see the bridge rectifiers with their negative and positive connected together and the same here so this one is just flipped from this one and you get your nice volt drop of about one and a half volts across this uh, bridge rectifier so this does the um, one half of the AC cycle volt drop and the other half of the AC cycle volt drop which then feeds through this uh, 10 ohm resistor into the gate of this uh, triac and this is a 2N6075 but any sensitive gate triac will do the trick and um, then it simply switches from this side the neutral up to the coil of the relay um, and then the relay contacts on this side here will bring the live down to the to the bottom socket right so this is the circuit i came up with for a master slave socket so the master triggers the slave or instructs the slave it would then detect whatever's plugged in here and if it turns on it would then be a relay operate the slave <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll use a light bulb an old school light bulb to demonstrate that if it draws power here it can then for instance trigger this heat gun here so we'll plug the heat gun in here we'll give it some power off the cliff quick test Right. Now, unfortunately, I can just plug it in to just demonstrate, but there's no switch. But if I plug this in, so as soon as this socket draws power, it triggers the relay and the load is activated. There's uh, various relay options I could have used. But I'm going for this nice uh, mini relay. It's rated at 16 amps. Um, and it's very small, so it'll fit inside that power strip easily. It's a PCB relay, but we're soldering straight onto it. Uh, another option would have been to use a 12 volt relay or 24 volt relay. The problem with that is it needs a 12 or 24 volt power supply. But uh, I think it's more elegant just using a 240, 240 volt relay. It keeps the circuit very simple. It only has uh, a couple of components it, it's a relay um, a triac and this uh, diode configuration made up of bridge rectifiers that gives you the volt drop to trigger the the triac so let's see if we can make it all fit in there i might speed up the video because it might take a little while so this power strip here um this was one uh, a purchased one that already had the plug the plug on it but you can buy these that you can wire yourself, the re rewirable ones, which is probably better. This one um, had uh, screws in. They were security screws. Um, I've cut the little bit in the middle out so that I can open and close it in the future. Um, but yeah, you can get the one that um, that you can open and wire yourself. It'll be a lot easier. Once the security screws were out and I slided along the edge, I found the clips and I popped it open. And um, you can tell that it's uh, been spot welded on. So we'll have to we'll have to break uh, one or two of those connections. But we'll see if we can fit it all in. It looks like uh, the relay could slot in there neatly, and then drive the slave sockets over there, and uh, the 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 volt drop load from the diodes to trigger the the triac. Um, that should fit in there neatly and then we just have to make sure everything is secured properly and is nothing is going to touch or um, everything's going to be properly insulated um, the insulation for for everything in here is by separation there's nothing is insulated everything is bare contact so if we just keep everything nicely separated nothing touching it should be fine <laughs>
uh, I think it fit quite nicely. Um, all the wires run nice and clear underneath these bus bars. Um, I've sleeved this one just in case it wants to shave through. Um, the components fit nicely. There seems to be enough clearance for everything. This is where I cut and split the neutral bus bar for the slave sockets. And this is where I've cut and split the live bus bar for the slave sockets and connected them to the relay. Uh, we need to find a way to secure these bus bars a bit more. So I might get some epoxy glue. Or but uh, um, I've done a quick test and it all seems to work. The lid fits on nicely. But uh, this, this plug has got a fuse inside it, so I don't need to add a fuse. But if you don't have plugs that you can put fuses in, like in the UK, you have to put a fuse inside, inside this. There needs to be one internal somewhere. I've decided it'd be nice if, um, if there was neon indicators. So I think it, uh, it'd be nice to show power on at the master. And as soon as these slaves trigger, you'd be able to see them come on. So we're going to see if they fit in there. I think there's enough space and we can do it so it looks nice. So I'm going to drill these little holes there. I've also put master slave stickers on here. So it's clearly indicated what's the master and what's the slaves. So let's try that. <laughs> all those neons was a bit harder than I thought since the neons are mounted on this side and they connected on to this side there has to be these jumper leads that go over and uh, I heat shrink them just so that uh, nothing can touch it might have been more trouble than it was worth but at least we have nice indicators so let's hope it all goes together nicely Right, let's test the neons. Um, let me zoom in a bit. So let's plug the the whole strip in. Master is always on. And they all come on. I think the neons were worth it. A lot of extra work, but at least it's nice to have the indication. This could be used for many different things. Maybe if you have your um, amplifier and speakers connected to your TV, um, you can have the TV automatically turn the amplifier off the moment you turn the TV off. So it's incredibly useful power saving device. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment in the box. And uh, perhaps let me know if there's anything interesting you want me to make a video of.